The wheel of time turns and ages come and pass, leaving memories that become legend. Legend fades to myth and even myth is long forgotten when the age that gave it birth comes again. In one age, called the third age by some, an age yet to come, an age long past, a wind rose in the mountains of mist. The wind was not the beginning, there are neither beginnings nor endings to the turning of the wheel of time, but it was a beginning. Hello and welcome to Through the Mixing Glass. My name is Joel, and if the passage I just read to you made no sense whatsoever, well, bear with me. Indulge me a minute, if you will. But if you're one of the millions of people out there who knew exactly what I was just reading from, well, I'm glad you found this video. What I just read was the opening passage to The Eye of the World, book one of the Wheel of Time series written by Robert Jordan. It's being adapted into a television series by Amazon Prime and is set to be released later this month. For many people like myself, this is a triumphant moment. I've been reading these books since I was in elementary school. The series would go on to span 14 books, 15 if you count the prequel. And these are not short books, by the way. Seven, 800 pages is the norm. I first encountered the series back when I was in fifth or sixth grade. I had already read The Hobbit and Lord of the Rings, and I loved the Redwall series. But it was the, it was the world that Robert Jordan created and the tale that he told that really kind of made me an epic fantasy diehard. I've read every book multiple times. I've gone to fan conventions and panels. So, you know, the show coming out and getting this mainstream attention is a really big deal for me and so many other people. So needless to say, I'm very excited about the TV series, but I have no idea how it's gonna turn out. I'm cautiously optimistic, but the fact is, it's a 14 book series and the books are long. So there's a lot to adapt. The story that we get on TV is probably gonna end up looking a lot different than the ones we got in the book. And I'm actually okay with that. Even with all of Amazon's money, there's just no way that they're going to be able to adapt all of the books into a show. A 14 book series with the books averaging about 800, 900 pages. I mean, that's probably 20 years of television. That being said though, I really do hope they do right by people like me, by book readers. This is a deeply personal series for many people. I have friends who name their kids after characters in these books. What I'm really trying to do is I'm trying to treat the show and the books as completely different things. My love for the books won't be impacted by the show. And honestly, I'm just really excited to spend time with these characters again. All right, so let's switch gears and talk about today's drink. Throughout the book series, there's a lot of food and a lot of drink that's consumed. Most of the characters uh, drink ale, like you're seeing in this tavern scene. They also drink a lot of wine. They also drink a lot of brandy. So I did some tinkering with that framework, if you will. This is my homage to the books and to the TV series as it gets ready to launch. So allow me to present to you the Two Rivers Sour. Thanks for hanging in there while I geeked out for a few minutes, but now let's get down to business with this drink. First into our shaker is a couple of dashes of Angostura. If you're new to cocktails, this is an indispensable ingredient, so definitely pick up a bottle. Next is three quarters of an ounce of simple syrup. This is a standard one to one ratio of plain white sugar and water. Next is a full ounce of freshly squeezed lemon juice. You can use bottled lemon juice if you want, but I'll be forced to tug my braid at you. And lastly is two full ounces of brandy. I'm going with Torres Tenure, which is a Spanish brandy. Or I guess since we're talking Wheel of Time, maybe I should say this is a Terran brandy. Hmm. Now let's add some ice and give it a shake. And we're going to strain this into a double rocks glass that's been filled with fresh ice. Now if you wanted to, you could stop here. This brandy sour alone is delicious, but I really wanted to make this drink something worthy of being served at the Wine Spring Inn. So I'm taking a bottle of red wine and measuring about a half an ounce. Now I'm gonna take my bar spoon and use it to float the red wine on top of our sour. As you can see, I spilled a little bit. I am such a wool-headed sheep herder. Now I really don't think this drink needs any extra garnish. The red wine float adds more than enough visual appeal. But like Matt Cawthon to the Shadar Logoth dagger, I can't resist adding a ruby red Luxardo cherry on top. All right, there we have it, my Two Rivers Sour. Love the layered effect, the red wine float on top, mixing with the darker brandy, beautiful drink. Let's go ahead and mix it up a little bit, and I'll sip from the straw. Mmm. Mmm. Oh, I love that. I'll be the first to admit, I don't know much about brandy. The bottle I used was just a mid-range bottle that I found at my local liquor store but this is delicious. It's a little bit sweeter than you might expect from a regular whiskey sour, um, but the red wine really blends really nicely. Brandy is obviously distilled from wine, um, so I think that kind of makes this a natural combination. I can't imagine I'm the first person to ever do this, um, but the drink itself tastes awesome. So there we have it. That is my Two Rivers Sour. 
Um, I don't know about you, but I'm very excited about the Wheel of Time TV show. It's gonna be a huge celebratory moment to see a series that I've been in love with since I was a kid brought to the big screen and not in a cheapo way. Like obviously Amazon is spending a lot of money on this series and I really hope that they do it right. Why don't you guys tell me what you think both about the drink and the Wheel of Time TV show. Are you a book reader? Which characters are you excited to see on screen? What do you think about the casting? I know it's been a little bit controversial. Personally, I'm okay with it because to me, the book and the TV show, I'm really striving to keep them separate. So it doesn't matter to me if the characters don't look exactly like I pictured them in my head. What are you gonna be drinking when the show premieres? I hope, I hope that it's a Two River Sour. Um, you've got a great recipe. Uh, super easy. The brandy was like 20 bucks and I live in New York, which means it's probably $15 elsewhere. Um, so yeah, no reason not to give this a try as far as I'm concerned. Thank you so much for watching. If you aren't already, please hit the subscribe button. I would really appreciate that. Share this with all your Wheel of Time friends. And on that note, I will just say, Taishar Manethrin. Cheers.